Konbanwa, Pat Tokuyama here, creator of All Day I Eat Like a Shark and the new Japanese cooking club all about plant-based Japanese food. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Give me a heart. Uh, let me know where you guys are watching from if this is your first time. Today, what we're going to be doing is kicking off a four-day series of live trainings. So this is going to be sort of a mini Japanese cooking challenge. Looks like I see uh, Mathy. Hello, Mathy. Hello, Maria. Thanks for joining, guys. And um, I have all of my ingredients here ready to go. So we're going to be doing a very different format from what we've done previously because I wanted to change things up. And what we're going to be doing today, if you can guess, we are going to be using some of this stuff. If you guys can read it, I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll show you guys up close for the second camera once that kicks in. This is called Foot. Foot is a, it's a processed product and it's made from uh, flour. It's like gluten. And this one's actually in the shape of mushrooms. So you can see it's like a cute little mushroom here. And uh, if you can get the real, the namafu is one of my favorite things. Namafu is like a soft, uh, it's kind of a firm, I guess, uh, I don't know how you describe it. It's, kind of, it's got like some bite to it. It's a little bit chewy. It's almost like, um, I don't know what you call it. I can't really think of a good analogy, but um, it's kind of like a really firm block of tofu, but it's not tofu because it's made from wheat. So this is a, these are little um, pieces of mushroom foo, shaped foo. Um, it doesn't taste like mushroom. It actually has no taste. So it's actually very good to use in soups and various other dishes. If you want to add a little bit of protein, since it has gluten, gluten is protein. And uh, this is just a little bag. It comes in various different shapes and sizes. So these are all the little pieces here. And uh, we're going to be adding this to our miso soup today. So since we have our uh, dashi going, we're using vegetarian stock today. This is Kayanaya Dashi. This is a company based out of Fukuoka, Fukuoka, Japan, in the southern part. And this is actually low sodium as well. And uh, it tastes uh, very Japanese, obviously. And that's what we're going to be using for our miso soup base. And we're going to be using also some Shimantogawa uh, miso. This is from my trip last year when I visited Kochi in Shikoku, which is in the southern part of Japan in the countryside, which is one of my favorite places to visit. And this is actually mugi miso, which is made from barley, as opposed to kome miso, which is made from rice. So the flavor is a little bit different, the texture is a little bit different, and it actually has some big chunks of barley, which I enjoy. And uh, it's a little bit on the sweeter side, even though it is a red miso. Red miso is also known as aka miso in Japanese. And that's what we're going to be doing with our soup. So we're going to be using some fu and some uh, barley miso, as well as some komatsuna, which is what I have here, homegrown. This is very similar to spinach. It's a long, leafy vegetable. And some tomatoes. So that's going to be our miso soup. I'm going to go ahead and get that started. I already took out the little packet from the dashi, so that's ready to go. We just need to simmer these for a little bit to rehydrate, and we will be on our way. And Jane is asking, is this a flavored form of seitan? If you're asking, if you're really asking about the foo, no, it's not seitan. It's a, it's a refined product that's made from uh, flour. It's a wheat. It's a wheat product, not soy. So I'm just going to put about uh, eight pieces. So I'll just show you what it looks like. These are going to blow up. Let me change the uh, screen for you guys. These are going to more than double in size. So you can see how they look all close up. And we're going to put in the vegetables. So we're going to throw in, this is about mm, one and a half cups of kumatsuna. You can also use spinach. And some heirloom mini tomatoes. And as soon as the fu has blown up in size, we'll drop in the miso. Okay, so step by step. One, you got to make your dashi. Two, you got to cook your vegetables if you're going to be adding vegetables. So we're adding komatsuna and the tomatoes and the fu. Fu is the uh, little product I was showing you before. Once that's done, step four is to put in the miso paste and turn off the heat. So it's simmering right now on very low heat. And actually, it was simmering. So I'm going to simmer it. As soon as the vegetables soften and the food has rehydrated, we're going to drop in the miso paste. And then we're going to stir it to dissolve and then cut the heat and then cover it because you want to preserve the aroma of the miso. That's the reason why they cover it whenever you go to a Japanese restaurant with a lid so that you can enjoy the aroma that comes up to your nose and is uh, very pleasant. So uh, 
that is essentially how you make miso soup. And my favorite ratio, you can use it how you can use whatever ratio of water to miso paste that you want or water to dashi that you want, and that is two tablespoons of miso paste to two cups of water. So uh, obviously if you're gonna make a, use a higher ratio of miso paste, it's gonna be more salty. And also, key point is depending on the miso that you have, if it does, you might wanna uh, check the label. If you can't read Japanese, you can post it on the uh, Daidokoro group. Maybe somebody who can can help you. Uh, but if you have miso that has dashi in it, you may not need to make dashi ahead of time. Um, today I did make dashi ahead of time because this miso does not have dashi. So sometimes, depending on the brand that you're using, uh, you might not need to use uh, or make your dashi ahead of time. You'll just use water because your miso paste has dashi in it. So key point there. And it looks like there's a pretty good uh, group of you guys. Let me know where you're watching from. If this is your first time here, my name is Pat Tokuyama. Good, nice to meet you. Thanks for joining. Uh, we're going to be doing a lesson on miso dengaku. Miso dengaku is one of my favorite ways to enjoy miso paste, which is going to be the theme for the Japanese cooking club in August. It's a little bit of a sneak peek here, but um, we're going to be using the recipe that's in my book, Tofu Ryori, which is tofu cooking in Japanese. It's available on Amazon if you want to check it out. And looks like Aaron Diaz, thanks for chiming in, Aaron Diaz. Your fu is seitan mix. Whoa. I think it depends. There's different, there's different types of food. So um, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't seen a seitan mixed with wheat flour, but generally food, the, the, the main product food is made from wheat flour and it's refined so that it has a very high gluten content. So it's really chewy. So yes, thank you for uh, chiming in there. So now we're gonna move on to the second uh, dish, which is gonna be the dengaku. So I have some Japanese eggplant here, which I have, slivered into about quarter inch pieces. And what we're gonna be doing with these is lightly pan frying them and then uh, steaming them because eggplants take a lot right. to cook through. And if you, you guys lost me for a second, but I'm back. I'm not sure what happened uh, to my camera. Anyways, pleasant, so uh, what we're gonna be doing. Steam them, that steam really helps to cook the eggplant very quickly and cook through. Give me a thumbs up and if you guys can hear me because I had the camera also cut out for a second. The flesh of the eggplant so that there's a little bit more surface area. So I just went very, very nicely, very gently with my knife and I scored it probably about a quarter inch thick or a quarter inch incision. And uh, that'll help the seat. Now the can you hear me? The heat give me a thumbs up. To penetrate into the flesh of the eggplant. Okay, good. All right, so now we're gonna get to the second part of the dish. They're, they're the second thing that we're preparing today. And like I said, we're gonna be um, pan frying the eggplant very lightly in some olive oil. So we're going to be using some extra virgin olive oil for that. And then we're going to broil the tofu. So this is a firm tofu, excess water removed. We're going to cut this up into very thin uh, blocks. You can cut it as thick as you want or as thin as you want. I prefer them about a quarter inch thick. And uh, we're going to broil them for about two minutes. So that'll give it a nice crust for the dengak sauce. And I already sprayed my little uh, baking sheet here. So that's what this is. There's a wire rack for even heating on both the top and the bottom. So the problem with uh, foil, if you're using foil instead of a rack, uh, the foil is not gonna allow the bottom part to cook because it's against the foil. And then you're gonna have to flip it. But if you use a wire rack, some of that heat will cook the tofu from the bottom and you won't have to flip it. So that's why I'm using this. And looks like I see uh, Ernie Diaz, I think this is the first time you've met. We've met, so thanks for joining. Let us know where you're watching from. Looks like I see Mickey. Good to see Mickey. And uh, all right, so now we're gonna get to the second dish. I'm gonna stop talking for a second. And are you guys ready? Because I know I am. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my oven heated. Get my pan heated. So I already cheated a little bit because step one would have been to cut your vegetables and prepare them, which I already did. So I'm going to go ahead and get my saute pan on. And let me know if you guys are learning anything new. So this is a 14 ounce block of tofu and that should be enough dengaku for both the miso and the tofu. So sometimes I switch up the dengaku and I use uh, red miso if I am in the mood. I've wanted something, the red miso is a little bit saltier if you didn't know that. 
And uh, today I felt a little bit sweet toothed, so I didn't feel like doing the red miso. And plus we're already making miso uh, soup with red miso. So if you can, once you uh, cut the tofu into little uh, blocks, I guess, you also want to uh, wipe it off with the uh, extra excess, wipe off the excess moisture so that they get more of a crust as opposed to steamed. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or tips, feel free to leave them below. Like I said, this is day one of the four day Japanese cooking challenge on plant-based Japanese food. So we're just getting started. Okay, so these are all pretty much good to go. You can see the sat, let me show you a close up, change the camera angle. So this is about how thick they are. Reminds me of uh, tofu cheese, which I know, uh, Jane, you shared recently. If you guys have never made a uh, tofu cheese before, you might want to try it. It's actually pretty simple, and you might be surprised at how close it tastes to the real thing. I actually used some on my salad yesterday. So as soon as these are done, being pat dry, we're going to go ahead and broil them like I mentioned. And if you've never broiled your tofu, don't worry. It comes out just fine. Just got to keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. Okay, so I think my saute pan is ready. So, pretty simple. Uh, Okazu dishes, side dishes. Okazu is the word for side dish in Japanese, and that's what we're making today. Because for the main dishes, I have uh, some leftovers. I have some hambagu, which is Japanese style hamburger, and uh, some potatoes that I made this weekend. All right, so these are going to go into the broiler in uh, about two minutes, and uh, just keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't burn. Okay. Oh, it's starting to smoke there. So we can go ahead and drop all of these on, try to uh, spread them out as evenly as possible onto the uh, fry pan. That's the problem with olive oil is that it smokes. It has a low smoking point as compared to other vegetable oils. Okay. So I'm gonna also put in about uh, two to three tablespoons of water. and then turn down the heat just a little bit so that the steam comes up. And we'll let that cook until it gets nice and uh, soft. And the way that you can tell that your eggplant is soft is by looking at the color. So first, the color of the eggplant will be sort of like a opaque off-white, but then once the uh, steam has cooked it through, it'll turn a nice uh, yellow, almost translucent color. So I think if you guys have cooked with eggplant, you probably already know that. So, to recap uh, what we did for the dangaku so far, step one was to uh, drain the tofu, excess water removed, uh, step two is to cut it into little pieces, step three is to cut the eggplant into uh, small pieces or slices as well, and in the same thickness roughly, score the eggplant with step four, and step five, which is what we're going to be doing now, is to make the dangaku sauce. So this is the uh, same exact recipe like I mentioned that's in my tofu ryori cookbook. And what we're going to be using is a quarter cup of white miso, which is what I have here. And let me change the camera again so you guys can see. So, quarter cup of white miso, two tablespoons of uh, osake, and uh, one egg yolk. Yes, it's a raw egg yolk. And two tablespoons of sugar. And by the way, the egg yolk makes a big difference if you've had dengak sauce with and without egg yolk. You may know what I'm talking about, but for me, after many, many times making it at home, I felt like that was the one thing I was missing. So we're just going and mixing this until it's evenly distributed, and this is going to be our sauce. And if you're having trouble with clumping, you can use a whisk or you can use an immersion blender. Just checking on my tofu really quick. Okay, still not there. I think our miso soup 
show you a close up of this. So the foo has gotten a lot bigger in size. And they really do look like mushrooms. I was kind of surprised. Let me know what you guys think. All right, so now we're gonna just put in the uh, miso paste into our soup and we're just about done. So if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them now. And if you want the recipes that we covered today for the miso soup as well as the miso dengaku, sign up on the waiting list for the Japanese Cooking Club at japanesecookingclub.com and I will send it out later tonight. Or you can also purchase the Tofu, Tofu Diori Cookbook which is available on Amazon too, if you'd like. All right, so there's two tablespoons of the miso paste. And I'll show you guys the leftover hambagu. This is half chicken, half tofu hambagu. So that's what this looks like. And some of my caramelized onions, which I enjoy with my hambagu sometimes, and some squash, and some uh, roasted potatoes. So that's my dinner. Sort of a yoshoku style. So yoshoku is uh, Western cuisine. I guess it's a Western style. And um, looks like there's some sugar that was stuck in here. If you ever go to a yoshoku restaurant in Japan, that's kind of what you'll get. Maybe some miso soup, if, at least if you order some hambagu. You'll get hambagu with some veggies, a very small portion of veggies because they're not big on vegetables in Japan. Um, and maybe a potato, like one, one piece of broccoli, maybe a few carrots, a few baby carrots, and uh, some miso soup, and some rice. All right, so I'll show you guys what this looks like. Beautiful color, by the way, nice and purple. You can see it's still a little bit um, uncooked, so I'm gonna let this go for a few more minutes. And you can, you can flip the eggplant if you want it to brown on both sides, which helps to improve the flavor. It's totally optional. Um, but as soon as it's cooked through, we can go ahead and paste, paint the uh, nasudengak sauce on it. It's delicious, by the way. All right. Oh, you know what? I didn't put my uh, oven on broil. It was on bake. I was wondering why it was taking so long. Now it makes sense. Oh yeah, so in my book I uh, also included konyaku, which is a konjak, is the, I guess the English term. Konyaku is uh, made from bracken, and it's this little brown block, you may have seen it. It's the same stuff that is uh, used for uh, shirataki noodles, and uh, it does not have a very pleasant taste uh, unless you cook it and parboil it. Parboiling, it helps to improve the flavor and uh, also it removes the excess water so that whatever it is that you're uh, cooking it in, it'll help to absorb that flavor and taste better. And if you've ever opened a freshly, um, if you've ever opened a bag of konyaku or shirataki noodles, you know it kind of smells like fishy. So that's what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh yeah, and then uh, quick announcement. On Wednesday, we're going to be having a special guest, one of the uh, Japanese cookbook authors. Her name is Deborah Samuels. She's going to be doing a uh, co-live training with me on uh, Wednesday, and we're going to be making something with rice, which I, I guess is super vague, but I don't want to give it away yet. Maybe if you guys want to guess, um, but if you guys want to tune in that day, there might be something special uh, waiting for you. So keep that on your date. It's going to be at the same time. 6 o'clock Pacific time. I'm just going to check underneath. I'm going to keep this covered. So that's going to about, be about it for today. Appreciate you guys joining. If you have any questions or comments, like I said before, leave them below. Go to JapaneseCookingClub.com to get the uh, recipes and sign up on the wait list. And I think that's going to be it if you guys don't have any questions. Oh yeah, so this month, I guess, if you're wondering about the new Japanese cooking club, this month the theme is shiokoji. Shiokoji is a fermented product that has salt. It's made with komekoji, salt, and water. 
and uh, it adds a lot of umami to your food, just like miso does. So lots of umami from shiokoji, uh, as well as amakoji, which is the sweet version of koji. So there's uh, shio, which is salt koji, and then ama koji, which is sweet koji. And there's also shoyu koji, which is uh, shoyu is soy sauce and koji. So three different variations for you to experiment with if you ever make it from scratch at home. And uh, maybe there might be some videos coming your way soon to show you just how to do that. So stay tuned. All right, guys, that's going to be it for today. I don't see any more uh, questions coming through. So hope you have a great rest of your week. Hope to see you tomorrow, 6 o'clock, same place, same time. And we'll be continuing with day two of the Japanese Cooking Club plant-based challenge. Miki's asking, okay, so you snuck a question in there. Miki's asking, uh, do you heat the dangak sauce? Nope. Nope. No heating allowed. Just kidding. Actually, I would recommend that you simmer it for about 10 minutes to thicken it up and also to help dissolve the sugar granules. And it's actually part of my recipe. And I didn't, for, I totally forgot to tell you guys to do that. So that would have been the last step for the dengak sauce. And uh, I should go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to use my little, uh, little, uh, what do you call this? Butter pan, butter pot. This is my new little toy. And thank you, by the way, Mickey, I owe you. That was a big oversight there. Tell you, whenever I'm live, there's always something I forget. And that one was an important step. So yes, we're gonna cook it. 10 minutes and then it'll be done. And it'll be a lot thicker because it is kind of watery right now. So thank you, you saved me. Yes, Maria, there will be a replay after, so thank you for watching. Don't worry. All right, thanks again, guys. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great rest of your week. Jana, bye-bye.